Zero Circle is still one of my favorite recording projects of all time. Before I had Robot Dog Studio in Williston, I would haul all my gear and my iPad okay. to a couple different local usually, studios and do the projects the there. The For this one, we were at Ryan Powers' Stu Stu Studio at Fort Brown. There was definitely like a Christmas Eve, Christmas morning vibe. The studio space was awesome. There was a ton of isolation between the live room and the control room. At this point in time, I was very much into doing these tight alternative rock projects. I knew it was going to be great. Everyone in the band was such a singular personality. Uh, Ray was awesome. He's just obsessed with drumming. It's just the drummer's drummer. Had this uh, beautiful Noble and Cooley kit. Um, did such a great job tuning it and just just really had his own sound. It was awesome to capture. We loaded in Friday night after work and got some scratch tracks down and did the drums that first night. The studio was a little disheveled at the time. There wasn't much gear there. I used mostly my own stuff that I was used to. I remember bringing a lot of reference tracks just so I could get used to the monitors, so I could understand how a kick drum sound that I liked was supposed to sound through those monitors. I cannot say enough good things about Matt St. Joyce on guitar. Just love what he wrote. Um, loved his uh, loved his influences and how he could envision different guitar parts coming together. And he was a really tight player and had a great sound with that Soldano amp. Way into these dreamy, delay-soaked rhythm leads that he would kick out. Always happy to turn some knobs on on someone's pedal while they're playing their part. So we definitely tracked with a ton of delay on the guitar, but I remember kind of mixing it with a, a similar amount of delay, just because it's, it's really hard to, to capture the clarity of a delay um, off the mic on a guitar. So I just usually try to mimic that in the mixing process, and it really brings it back to life. Let's do that, and I'm gonna throw a little... And yes, the great TJ Maynard on bass guitar. Still a force to be reckoned with to this day, playing with Ghastly Sound. Uh, one take Tej, as they called him. Tj used to use this old Ampeg V4 as his primary amp, and I just love the sound of that thing. Back in these days, I would throw three or four mics and a DI at a, at a bass guitar, at the minimum. Definitely had to experiment in that way in my early days just to find out what would be the most reliable tool to use in the future. Just for the overall Vocals, another force to be reckoned with, Ty Gerwitz, who also lives on in Ghastly Sound. I thought something was wrong with my mic. I never recorded a vocalist that sang so loudly. Definitely had to check it a few times. But such a such a cool timeless quality to his vocal lines and his tone. It's rock, it's sexy, it's I don't know, I just love it. He's really got something. The verse harmony in this song is just incredible. It just makes it. It's the hook. He's always a master at running a million harmony lines that I could go in and play with in the mix. I love looking back at this video and listening to the album. Really proud of what we did. I still feel really fortunate to have been able to work with such level of talent and creativity. I still love it. I think it still holds up today.